this if, if I have to have any worry or fear, it's that I'm just talking to no one and it's not being captured. It's <laughs> oh my god, I would die. Welcome back to Spoonsville. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, today on the program, we will be covering Intouchables. Intouchable. 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 <laughs> en français. <laughs> ouais. <laughs> yeah, it's the original French French version movie, not 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 the American I think remake of it. Came yeah. out 2010, 2011, something like that. Brief synopsis: twenty seconds. We give ourselves to give a overview of the of the thing in case you missed it or haven't seen it for a while. Yeah, want to touch it, touch up. Okay, uh, follows the story of a guy who uh, shoot meets <laughs> meets quadriplegic oh, quadriplegic who is needing another helper and. Hires a guy who at first just needs to get his benefits. So he comes in, so he checks off the paper. But then they end up becoming fast friends, and then they form a friendship, a lasting friendship throughout their whole lives. And yeah, <laughs> good job. Oof, first like five seconds, I couldn't my brain fart, but it, it came together. You helped me there. You kind, yeah, I kind of cheated a little bit. Thank security. you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. But yeah. oh, it was so sweet. You know, it was so sweet and so heartwarming. heartwarming. Jinx. You owe me a Coke. Nah, I don't really like Coke. It, it was it was just really heartwarming. Like, uh, I found kind of skipping to the end, but I found at one point, you know, when when they're when they're when he finally has to say goodbye, or or, or you know, at one point he, he gets him just to help him with one more thing. Yeah. You know, and you and you're and it makes you so happy that they're that they're realizing how much they need each other, you know? But it was just it was so I'm trying to think of another word for sweet. What's another word for sweet? Mm. Oh, it was juicy. Endearing. Yeah. So for me, it, yes, it was absolutely heartwarming, but I felt there was a lot. I cried afterwards a lot. Yeah. Not because, not tears of joy, just tears of... Tears of tears. Tears of tears. Yeah. Uh, no, I I was sad. Even right now as I'm thinking about it, when you talked about the last scene, I can mm. tell my voice is already shaking. I can hope I can you know, pull it together. <laughs> it was just so sad. Yeah. It was a culmination of two people that really f realized how much they, not even so, needed each other, but also just got so much out of each other's company, you know? Yeah. True, true it, friendship, true, you know, free from, like, obviously they have to eventually slowly get to know each other, but by the end, they, I don't know, they, it's like they, um, you know, they, they were meant for each other. Yeah. One of those kind of friendships. Yeah. Like, you never want them to be be apart, you know? Were you uh, clipping my nails just now on time? No, I just <laughs> like playing with your nails. Why they become friends is because Driss, the helper, uh, he just treats him like any, Anything. like his friend. Yeah. Like, he, he, you know, he makes jokes, jokes at his expense it, yeah. and, like, you know, and... But he doesn't worry about, like, oh, wait, I shouldn't have said that because, yeah. you know, you, that could take offense because you can't move your, your body. Yeah. You know? Which all the caregivers that are interviewed yeah. before he, this guy decides to hire They're Chris, all very nervous. They're, they're all very nervous. Making and sure they... To, yeah, they're yeah. trying to make sure, make sure that they're sweet and yeah. kind and gentle, make sure yeah. that they don't offend. Yeah. So that's the thing where yeah. I, I felt like this movie um, just puts you in the mind of people that are disadvantaged in societies. Mm -hmm. For, in a certain yeah. way, that they just want to be treated normally. Yeah. Like, I, I do not want for you to mm -hmm. treat me differently from other people just yeah. because you think that I need to, you to be sensitive, yeah. right? Because, for example, banter, mm -hmm. that's fun, right? Yeah. People who are not, uh, who don't um, have um, physical disabilities, mm -hmm. If they make fun of each other, you know, mm -hmm. like there's just a joke around, yeah. you know, you're like, okay, well, you don't have any issues. People yeah. are much more open yeah. to joking and, you know, banter because yeah. you're like, well, you're confident enough in yourself because you don't have any issues. Yeah. Yeah. So I can make, I can make fun yeah. um, of whatever. But then with other people, the people who do maybe have certain very visible um, disabilities, yeah. then you feel like you don't want to do that, but you don't yeah. actually realize you're ostracizing these right. people because... You know, I don't want people walking on eggshells around me. Right. You know, I don't want people treating me a certain way because they assume that I have certain struggles and so they cannot have a certain conversations with me. Like mm -hmm. I've, you know, one, I am female and of course, skin tone. So I have had that experience of people convert having censoring themselves and having certain conversations with me mm -hmm. in a certain way because they feel that they don't want to offend me or they um, assume that whatever issues that are happening in the world 
that pertained to my, yeah. you know, like how I look. You wouldn't um, want I'm, brought up. I wouldn't or, want brought up or yeah. I'm negatively affected by. Right. And so then they don't, so then they're, they're, the conversation isn't open. It mm. isn't, you know, it isn't fi- fun. It's very restricted. Yeah. And even I feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And that is not something that I like. I don't like people walking on eggshells around me. Mm. I think that it's nice for human beings to engage with each other. Um, openly and if there is an issue address it it's okay yeah. to offend but acknowledge it and then say how would you like for me to treat you in future for yeah. example yeah so our go-to is to be sensitive mm. and which can be very detrimental and so um, the quadriplegic rich guy philippe yeah he then hires this ex-prisoner because of the fact that this guy just treats me like everyone. This yeah. thing that I long for, mm-hmm. to just be treated like everybody, to not be like, to not have people walking on eggshells, yeah. to for have people laugh, you know, just mm-hmm. make fun of me about the fact that I can't feel anything. Yeah. 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 And I think that is, that is why he hires him. He doesn't even know him. He doesn't care mm-hmm. that he's a prisoner. Yeah. He just cares yeah. that even though other people are worried, this is a, an ex-prisoner, yeah. you know, what are you doing bringing this person into your house? Yeah. And he's like, I couldn't care less. Yeah. I just like the fact that he makes me feel like a human being. Yeah. 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 So it's just, it's, it's also such a funny movie. Like it's, it, it's, it's such a perfect blend of, of tragedy and, and the sad parts of life with so much great humor. Yeah. It's really, it's one of those movies. If you think about it, it's a very sad movie, but it's so funny and so heartwarming that it's, it's so easy to get through and so entertaining. I love that. Um, and that's a hard balance to make. Yeah, there are uh, uh, there. Remember that scene where he's shaving him. I do. And he um, he's doing all these goofy looks oh, yeah. um, as <laughs> oh, he shaves great. his beard, and then the last look is Hitler. Yeah. And he Driss starts making fun of you know him being kind of like Hitler or whatever, yeah. and talks so about speaking German, he puts his hair speaking down, German, yeah. puts his hair down, yeah. and. And we were just talking, remember we talked about how, you know, how like life is so complicated, mm-hmm. right? And it's good, it's bad, there's ugly, there's awkward, there's yeah. pain, you know, there's happiness. And there's sometimes making fun of things mm-hmm. that um, made other people suffer. Right, right. <laughs> Which, you know, I think people, when they do do that, it's not necessarily that they are feeling like i mm-hmm. love yeah that you that know this these, happened that or, this happened or yeah. you know what i mean it's like you it's know it's almost still to kind of cope with making sense that that was something that happened yeah you know yeah, yeah like um because sometimes you know there you cope with humor right mm-hmm. um when something sad happens for mm-hmm. example or you i don't know you interact with something that was tough in a way that's more in a humorous way to let it out, you know, like you're almost kind of laughing, like, geez, my, maybe if you came from a family of, you know, like neglectful parents, like, Jesus, I was raised by wolves, you know what I mean? <laughs> You'll say stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I think the point is with that movie, when they were talking about, um, when he was making fun of the guy looking like Hitler, when you watch that, if you were, if that was happening in public, right. you would think, how insensitive. Right. You know, so yeah. many people suffered, yeah. you know, and so it's interesting because I think everybody can relate to in the privacy of their own yeah. home. People have done things fun. like that. Yeah, making oh. fun of something yeah. or someone. Yeah. Um, even understanding that I would never yeah. do this in public because yeah. the public doesn't know me. Mm-hmm. Like I can do yeah. it with my husband right. because my husband knows that I'm a good person yeah. and he, they, my husband they, knows that I don't want any yeah. ill wish any will ill will yeah. towards this person yeah. and you know i don't want you know like i don't feel any negative way yeah. about that person yeah it's just how as human beings sometimes you know like rather to deal with tough things yeah sometimes it's just much easier to deal with them through humor yeah because humor allows you to talk about it and let it out of your heart yeah. without the sometimes feeling a little bit nervous or shy to mm-hmm. cry yeah. because sometimes it's hard for us to cry and express mm-hmm. our emotions that way but then we still want to get things off our chest so yeah. then maybe we just laugh about it like yeah. oh my gosh you know this person really screwed me over yeah. you know like am i like yeah, i don't know am i the or am i the dumbest person alive mm-hmm. you know for example right yeah. these are just things you'll say in a humorous way but yeah. these are actually very deep things take away the the goofy yeah. the goofing around and the laughing and just have and just strip that 
you know, the, the words of everything, everything surrounding it, you realize how deep a conversation they're having. Right. And I, yeah. Yeah. And, well, and I think also they're doing, it was happening while they were shaving, which is, I think something where the mundane things in life that you end up doing, you know, like shaving how many hundreds of times throughout your life or, or showering how many times throughout your life. Yeah. You know, it can kind of get just too routine and too habitual. And, you know, if you want to try and enjoy life, sometimes you have to take a, a chance of, you know, well, while I'm showering, maybe I'm going to sing really loud and just go nuts and pretend like I'm an opera singer. Yeah. Or while I'm shaving, I could look like Lemmy from Motorhead or I can kind of mess around with different, well, I'm, I'm shaving anyway, I might as well see what kind of things I can do with my face just yeah. for a joke, you know, just to also enjoy the mundane parts of life more too. Yeah. You know. Uh, Philippe, who was a quadriplegic, lost his wife uh, to cancer, I believe, was it? Yeah. Um, and... And then he had the paragliding. Was it paragliding? He had the accident? yeah, yeah. The, the paragliding accident, and yeah, he says not living with her is more painful than being a quadriplegic. Yeah, that was really sad. Yeah. Um, and then you have Driss, who comes from a very tough background. Obviously, yeah. he left his country in West Africa never you you never leave your country for any you know like for any easy reason yeah, on a, right on a and it, yeah and that so he it was obviously tough conditions back home he moves to to go to france to go live with um the aunt and it's in a very disadvantaged community and already being an immigrant is incredibly difficult you are moving to a country which you weren't raised in, you weren't socialized um, into. And so it's very hard to navigate um, everything that you knew about how human beings interact with each other is just, it's not applicable anymore. And mm -hmm. so you have to figure out how to, how do I deal with this new environment? And a lot of the times our parents, like the aunt, for example, she moved there um, as an older person. And so she, she never really, you know, with immigrants, a lot of times, it's harder for the parents to integrate. You know, the older you are, the harder it is to integrate. And so if you're already in a disadvantaged position, it's, it, that, it becomes even that much harder for you to make a life uh, of yourself, a comfortable life of your, um, for yourself. And a lot of the times, family situations, they repeat themselves, right? They replicate mm -hmm. over time. Like if you come from a poorer family, then a lot of your, the likelihood of you staying poor or higher. We see that, you know, Driss is basically in that situation. And a lot of the times, unfortunately, when you have, when you are an immigrant who is struggling in those ways, sometimes you turn to crime because you're just so desperate. You don't understand the system that you're now, this new system that you're now living in and how to make it in the system in a way that's like in a healthy way, you know? So at the end of the day, you still are a human being and you do have certain needs and you have certain desires. And then you find yourself doing things like um, turning to crime, especially when you have immigrant parents, parents who don't really understand know how to cultivate your growing up in a way that's going to help you assimilate to the system. And so um, that's basically, I think, what happens to Driss. And it makes me, it made me really sad because even when he goes to the interview, he, he just said, just sign my paper and say that you didn't want to hire me. Yeah. I think he just faced a lot of that and yeah. he had been so... He'd, he'd um, built a defense against it, mm -hmm. and he was like, I, I, it's, this is just the expectation. Yeah, let's make this rejection just part of our routine. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing that I, that I thought about, I, about how many people there are mm -hmm. who do go through those yeah. kind of things. And, you know, it, it's also an example of where people feel like, oh, well, you know, uh, if you feel like this is, you can recognize this is an unfortunate situation you find yourself in. Just, you know, really pursue a way to, to get out of it. But it really is tough when you don't, everyone else you know is in the same spot. It's, and no one really has any idea of like, oh, why don't you try this? I know that could be good for you. Yeah. When basically everyone you go to is just like, I'm just, yeah. you know, I really have nothing to help you with. And so it's really tough to, uh, to on your own, basically, um, keep every day trying to find something that will help you, I don't know. Get yeah. you out of whatever you find yourself in. It's mm -hmm. really tough. Yeah. You see people struggling. Yeah. You know, and and you, or maybe people, homeless it's, it's people. It's not always just themselves always, that's holding them yeah, back. It's, yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, sometimes you, you're trying yeah. and then people in your life hold you back, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 
So that also made me sad. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I know I clicked it. I don't know if you have this, but sometimes I'm just like, is it recording? I have this. If, if I have to have any to... worry or fear, it's that I'm just talking to no one and it's not being captured. <laughs> oh my God. I would die. Nah, we good. Um, they write um, that. At the end, at they the end. explain what happens yeah. to the two characters. That after. Philippe moves back to um, Morocco. It turns out he's yeah. he was from there originally. And then Driss moves back to Africa and has a farm, you know, and... Algiers. Yeah. And that made me very sad. I don't know. Yeah, it made me sad just wondering if Driss was okay. Yeah. You know, because Philippe is well off, and I just wondered if Driss was okay. That's probably why they told you what happened after, because they knew people were going to want to know what happened to them both after. Yeah, yeah. I, I just hope he is. Um, well, and yeah, and that, that the friendship... It, it was obviously for me the the end even though they don't explain at that time that okay this is the end but it was the way that they looked at each other and you know just I don't know like nodding at each other knowingly I, it felt like they were saying yeah okay you are gonna this you're, lady's not okay gonna now. yeah you're, you'll be okay you don't need me anymore yeah and so it was kind of like this is it goodbye I helped yeah. you for as long as I needed to and ah. Oh. Yeah. I just that made me sad. Is that so your favorite sad. moment? No, it, my my favorite moment. That that was the moment that me. wrecked me. Yeah. I cried. My favorite so moment much. is when he he's like, uh, I need to get some air. Like, just take me somewhere. And he's like, Okay, I'll handle it. And then at one point, he takes him to a spot where you can see uh, the ocean. I think there's just a, a big body of water, and uh, and Philippe just gives him this look of of just like love and appreciation for him. Yeah. It's just it's the kind of I don't know. It's the kind of look that. A man that once had true love for a woman could show to another man. <laughs> Ugh, I'm getting emotional again. I think relationships like the one that Driss and Philippe have are so hard to come by. Mm -hmm. um, having that level of reciprocity in a relationship, that le level of care and appreciation for someone, and where both parties are showing that, you know? Mm -hmm. And both parties are truly fulfilled by this relationship that is so hard to come by mm -hmm. so that's why i was I, I i feel sad even now that they weren't it didn't they, they weren't living or driss didn't continue to be a, a, the caretaker mm -hmm. and i do sincerely that, hope that he's both of them are well mm -hmm. one could say well you know like you know how we always we talk about sometimes people need each other in a certain period of time mm -hmm. And they needed to, he needed to, Driss needed to be his caregiver for that moment, yeah. that time. Yeah. And that's it, yeah. right? And, and then the next chapter. And then the next chapter. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the next chapter is a negative one. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like with parents, you know, when their kids move out of the house, mm -hmm. it's still sad. It's a, it's a chapter. Yeah. It's new a chapter. new chapter. And yeah. you don't have your kid. Your kids aren't kids anymore. They're your peers because they're adults yeah. now. Yeah. And that is a new dynamic, as a new relationship, and you you have to come to terms with the fact that you're not going to spend as much time with them anymore. But because they were such a meaningful part of your life for so long, and of course, especially if you had that great, deep connectedness that these two people had, it does feel, you know, I don't know, you feel, you, you do feel very heartbroken by its ending, mm -hmm. as much as you understand that it has to happen. Mm -hmm. That's you can always reread the chapter, that. but it won't be quite the same as the first time you read the chapter. Right? <laughs> so you know how it ends. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it was a very beautifully done movie. The acting was just fantastic. I think the casting was just oh, brilliant. Right. The actors, Philippe, the guy who plays Philippe, yeah. um, whose name I don't remember. I think his last name is Clouse. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But And then Omar, Omar Say, um, who played... Um, uh, who played S.Y. Uh, S.Y. He played uh, Dress. Yeah. Such a fantastic, incredible actor. He's the guy, the Lupin guy. Mm -hmm. the Lupin. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a movie that everything ensemble, it makes you want to be a helper with that guy at his house because of you, you start to connect with all the other helpers. Yvonne, Magali. Yeah. Such a... I'm still sad. Yeah, that's... The mark of a good movie, you know, it, 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 it affects you long after you watch it. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of quality that uh, everyone should aspire to. Yeah. In whatever you do. What would you give it? 
A hundred out of ten. Yep. Yeah. Hundred out of ten ripe tomatoes. So a thousand percent on ripe tomatoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. But what did you guys think? Have you guys seen Intouchable? Intouchable? Mm -hmm. Or the Untouchables? Or just Untouchable in English? Yeah. What would you think? Did it... Uh, are you still... Are you still affected by it? Too? <laughs> yeah, let us know in the, in the comments. Yeah, I'm still affected. Yeah, I'm still affected. It's okay to be affected. Yeah. yeah. I'm affected by a lot of stuff. All the time. <laughs> Every time. That's it. <laughs> Till next time. I'm gonna cry. Check us out here. This, yeah, like... <laughs> so we gotta cut right now. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>